The following program is sponsored by Friends of New Day Ministries. Uh, so invest in your own vision. I would say that first. I mean, if you don't believe in your vision, why would anybody else? Mm -hmm. So invest in the vision that God has given you, especially during this season. Welcome to my new day. I'll tell you, there is so much hope in this next 30 minutes. Don't go anywhere because Craig Hill is in the studio, Bob, mm -hmm. and he has been helping us in the areas of wealth and prosperity. And I'll tell you, God wants you to have everything that you need. He wants, he's our yeah. provider. Today we're going to talk about investing. Mm -hmm. And you might be thinking, oh no, I, I'm, I'm just weathering the storm. I'm just going to get by, you know, in these economic times that we're living in, in the unknown and all those types of things. And uh, don't talk to me about investing. Then they needed to but, watch yesterday's program. Exactly, exactly. because you're missing vision. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yesterday's program could help you immensely in that way. But Craig Hill is our guest, but more than that, he's our friend. Yes, uh, for Audrey friend. and I, he yes. has been a real mentor and a, just a big, big brother to us, and we love him dearly. <laughs> we do a covenant marriage course with him around the world, and yes. uh, it's just an honor uh, to, to work with him. He is the founder and president of Family Foundations out of Littleton, Colorado, and I would really encourage you to uh, just introduce yourself to the ministry and uh, because they do wonderful uh, oh, yeah. events, uh, they do Life seminars, uh, you know, ancient past, you know, all these types of things. Uh, so, you know, Craig is a world changer. And so to have him here and to be able to bring him into your home is a real gift. He's authored a brand new book entitled Five Wealth Secrets. And Craig, thanks for being with us. Great to be with you, Bob and Audrey. It's always such a pleasure. It's been fun, hasn't it? Well, we've I've had, enjoyed these programs. These programs are great. And I love this topic because I think the Spirit of God is speaking to people about this. And I might mention also on our website, familyfoundations.com, there are are various events on finances that are taking place throughout mm -hmm. North America. Okay. So I encourage people to get on those. There may be a live event coming up near, yep. near where. Uh, and and uh, just just give a, a brief introduction. I'm not. Sh do you still call it ancient paths or the introduction? Yes, seminar? We, we're still doing ancient paths okay. seminars, and also a critical one is blessing generations. That's it. That's it. Blessing generations is talking about how can I break negative <laughs> cycles that have been passing down maybe from my parents, grandparents to me that are negative and destructive and will pass right on down to my children. Yeah. How do I terminate that and how do I initiate those cycles of blessing to ensure that yeah. my children will prosper, serve the Lord Jesus Christ all the days of their life and prosper in their marriage, their family, their health, their finances, their career, their ministry, all those areas. These are really life-changing events. You know, when you invest your life in a weekend event like this, you come out different. So mm -hmm. I encourage you to do so. Right. Today we want to talk about investing. Yes. And I think a lot of people are burying their head in the sand and just waiting, weathering the storm. You know, tell me when it's over and tell me when it's safe. Right. Uh, that's actually not a bad idea if okay. they, <laughs> during this season because okay. I, I really think that we are in a, in a season that is much like a hurricane. And, uh, you know, if you lived down on the Gulf Coast and uh, you heard that a hurricane was coming in, uh, like, Forrest Gump, you were a shrimp, shrimp boat uh, owner. Well, one of the best things you might want to do is take your boat out of the water mm -hmm. during that period of time because it becomes so volatile. How do you keep your boat from being destroyed? And I really do think that that is the type of season that we are in. And uh, there are some things that people can do with, uh, with money uh, that they're willing to put at risk uh, during a hurricane type of season, but the volatility is quite a bit uh, okay. more than normal times. So the, the very first thing that the Lord taught me uh, about investing many, many years ago was to make a clear distinction between what I call risk capital and core wealth. And uh, what I mean by that is my definitions are simply these core wealth is that money, the principle of which I really don't want to lose. Uh, and as such, I'm not willing to place that at risk with a hope of gain because there's too much chance that I could lose the principle. 
So core wealth, I simply want to preserve in whatever I consider to be the safest place uh, that's not going to be damaged by the hurricane. Or that's like taking your shrimp boat out of the water, putting it in a dry dock gotcha. for a period of time while the hurricane passes. And suppose it turns out to be a false alarm. The hurricane doesn't come anywhere near where you were. It went, you know, hit 200 miles up the coast or 500 miles up the coast from where you were. What's the harm in taking your boat out of the water for a while? waiting for the, the hurricane to pass. You don't lose much. On the other hand, what's the downside if the hurricane hits? And direct hit in your boat in the water, yeah, you lose everything. You lose everything. And uh, that's what I, I think is uh, potential, potentially happening uh, in, uh, in this season. And so in terms of investing, I would encourage people to, uh, to divide uh, between core wealth which would be that which you really don't want to lose, the principle of which you don't want to deplete or want to lose. Take that out of the water. Put that in a safe place. Mm -hmm. I, and I would say, uh, you know, the safest, safest of all places really is probably cash in your mattress. Uh, <laughs> No, serious. <laughs> really? But, but a lot of people don't want to do that. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you know, other, whatever you would consider to be the safest type of vehicles might be uh, a bank account uh, or could be uh, treasury notes or something like that, government treasury notes, uh, which are as secure as a government is. Uh, and uh, I think governments in the United States and Canada will probably be preserved through the storm. Uh, mm -hmm. So I would think those are somewhat safe uh, vehicles. But then with risk capital, there are things that you can do with risk capital then to invest in things that might, may potentially multiply. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say two things about that. One would be uh, invest in your own vision. Invest mm. in your own vision. What better place is there uh, to put risk capital and to risk resources that you, you have available than in the vision that God has given you? Uh, so invest in your own vision. I would say that first. I mean, if you don't believe in your vision, why would anybody else? Mm -hmm. So invest in the vision that God has given you, especially during this season. I think that's real wisdom, Craig, during because I, I, I haven't really thought of that. Whenever I think of investment, I think of what person or what company or what Right. Where can I place this? But to, to invest in your own vision, that is very profound. Well, here's one of the other reasons that I say that is I think during this season, which we talked about in the first program in this series as being a jubilee season, mm -hmm. I think that we are seeing the global economy purge debt, which means prices will come down, deflation will come. I expect a scenario much like the 1930s in the United States, and when that happens, uh, I would say two things. One of the best things that you can do is preserve cash because when the debt is purged and it gets to the bottom, there will be houses, cars, land, businesses available for pennies on a dollar. I was asking my dad about the Depression in the 1930s. He lived through it. I was mm -hmm. born after it. And I said, what happened? He said, well, many, many people lost their house, their farm, their car, their business. I said, where did they go? He said, well, they reverted back to the bank. The bank repossessed them. I said, what did the bank do with them? He said, well, the bank sold the farm, the house, the car, the business at auction, and people came along and bought it for pennies on a dollar. I said, well, who bought it? Who are the people that bought it? He said, the people that somehow had an inkling of what, had, what was going to happen and preserved their cash. They had cash to go and buy businesses, houses for pennies on a dollar. Uh, if you're in debt, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. But if you have preserved cash, you can do that. And I believe during this season, that's one of the best investment opportunities of a lifetime. If you had the cash and you could buy a $300,000 house for thirty dollars or $50,000, that would be a wonderful opportunity. And uh, I believe it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for people who have eyes to see the potential of uh, what may happen. And so people are always thinking, well, should I invest in this market or that market or this investment or that investment? Uh, I think that's like somewhat like having your shrimp boat in the water in mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and I'm not certain that there are, are any uh, real uh, solid investments that you could say with any degree of certainty will withstand a hurricane. Uh, not many. 
Uh, and so I've chosen not to put my money in those kinds of investments at this time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but rather to preserve cash with an expectation that God will direct me to uh, things that can be purchased for pennies on a dollar in, in the next few coming years. Yeah. Audrey and I, we've always taken, you know, our excess or cash that we have and we invest it in ourselves. Right. And in one way that we do it is in writing books. Yeah. Writing books costs money. It does. And, mm -hmm. you know, the printing and the publishing of them and those types of things. But then we're able to create a tool, right. you know, that's able to help people. Exactly. And, uh, and so that has been a way that we've in invested in the, in the vision. In your own vision exactly. that God has given you, mm -hmm. which is to bless and help people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the book that you've authored is Five Well Secrets. And today we do want to talk about I investment. Yeah. You know, um, so we're rec we recognize that we're in a a very turbulent season right. that we're in. But there's also a way of investing in others. Yes. And there's a, a way of investing in our generations. And what I, have found, what I found about that is many people, I found this as a pastor and I found this also as a businessman, that many times I invested in the wrong people because I didn't know who I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I realized that four, the 4% 4 people do, they invest in other people who multiply other people who multiply. And uh, I found that principle first in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Paul said this you, in verse 1, You therefore my son, so he's speaking to Timothy as a spiritual son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things which you have heard from me in the presence of, the, of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. We see four generations of multiplication here, and Paul instructs Timothy to invest in people that have two very specific qualities. He said, Timothy, I want you to take what I've invested in you, and I want you to invest that in other people who are, number one, faithful. People who will not squander the message. People who will not squander the money. People yeah. who will not squander the vision. Yeah. Invest in people who are faithful. And number two, people who are multipliers people who can multiply this into the lives Pass of others. Pass it on to others. It's so, the fruit principle in the kingdom. So there are two qualifications of multiplication for investing in people. People who are faithful and people who will multiply. Mm -hmm. Then I looked over in, in a parable Jesus told in Luke chapter 19. And this is a very powerful parable, but it's exactly the opposite of what our natural mind would think. <laughs> and this is the, the parable where it says, A nobleman went to a distant country to receive a kingdom. I'm in verse 12 of, of Luke 19. Uh, uh, to receive a kingdom for himself and then return. He called ten of his servants and he gave them ten minas. Now a mina is a unit of money. Probably about ten thousand dollars, actually. Oh, wow. So it's quite a—it's a significant sum of money. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, he gave this unit to them, and he said, "Do business with this until I come back." It said his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, "We do not want this man to reign over us." So the first issue is, are you willing to let somebody else reign over you, or are you doing things for yourself? And uh, this is like uh, the Lord is saying, I will provide, I will give you resource, but will you do business on my behalf? Or w will, will you allow me to reign over you? Or are you going to have to do this, what you want to do right. yourself? Right. It says, uh, when he returned after receiving the kingdom, he ordered that these servants to whom he had given the money be called to him so that he might know the business that they had done. Now, what qualifications do you think this master is looking for? Two qualifications. Faithfulness. People who are faithful and people who can multiply. 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 Right. These are the two qualifications. The reason I say this is, you know what I did as a pastor? Hmm. I spent tons and tons and tons of time and energy investing in people who were nice people, mm -hmm. who were faithful people, and had zero capacity to multiply. And do you know what happens if you invest in people who can't multiply? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> They're nice. They're nice. They're and nice. And they're also faithful. Yeah. The problem is they don't multiply. So here's an interesting concept. Do you know what this master was intent on doing? He was receiving a kingdom, and his intent was to grant authority over cities. Mm. Now, how much is a city worth? What's in a city? We're in Winnipeg right now. Mm -hmm. What's the value of the city of Winnipeg? 
Wow. It would be billions Absolutely. of dollars. So to give somebody authority over billions. that city and all its resources, billions of dollars. So how do you qualify? Who do you want to do that? Who, who, to whom do you want to give that kind of Some authority? Of so this master said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to establish a little qualification test. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take 10 guys and I'm going to give them each $10,000 because <laughs> I want to see what they're going to do with the 10,000 when they don't know. And uh, he did. And so he says, what have you done with it? Well, they come back and the first guy says, I've multiplied your mina into 10 minas. Here it is. And the master says this amazing thing. He says, well done, good servant, because you've been faithful in a very little thing. You are to be an authority over 10 cities, not one. Wow. 10 cities. Wow. Ten. Now, I think the mouths of the other servants probably dropped open. Yeah, and they probably went, well, you didn't tell us there were cities at stake. <laughs> I mean, if we would have known you were going to give out cities, we would have tried a little harder. And he went, I know. I wanted to find out what you would do when you didn't know. And so he gave that guy charge over 10 cities. The second one came. I multiplied your mind out of five. Well done, good and faithful servant. Be over five cities. Third guy came. I knew you were hard taskmaster, reaping where you did not sow. And uh, so I just buried it. Here you can have back what's yours. Yeah. And now uh, the guy said, take the one away from him and give it to the guy who has 10. They said, but master, he already has 10. And the master said, I know. I want to invest in people who are faithful and can multiply. And then that's what he did. And so I discovered, how do we find who we want to invest in? We want to invest in people who are faithful and people who can multiply. Powerful principle. It's, it really is. I, I was thinking about Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, my brother said to me, actually, so are you saying that people who can't multiply are just sort of worthless? And I said, no. But there's a principle of leadership. Leaders have to learn to multiply. They put together teams, and the entire team reaps the reward of that team. Why is Mother Teresa, why is she probably the most well-known a uh, person uh, of, of ministering to the neediest of the needy, the poorest of the poor. Why is that? And the answer is because when she passed away, she had 623 different missions reaching hundreds of thousands of people around the world. How did she do that? Because she, did, she, she would have never done that if she only continued just ministering to the poor in her location herself. But apparently the idea came to her one day, I need to find some other people that are faithful, that are faithful and, and can, can multiply. multiply. And she began to impart a vision into others. And she said, could we do this not only in Calcutta? Could we do this in New Delhi? Could we do this in another city, another city, another city? 623 different missions. She apparently stopped doing all the work herself and started investing in others who were faithful and could multiply, and this work multiplied. The reason Mother Teresa is probably well, more well-known than anybody else is because she grew a network of ministries that were touching more people than yeah. anybody else, yeah. and that's why. Powerful. All right, generations. Yes. You know, our family, our children's children. Proverbs 13, 22. This is the fifth principle in the book. And again, there are a lot more how-tos in the book. We yes. can just touch the principle. Yeah. Proverbs 13, 22 tells us uh, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. And secondly, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. I began thinking about that. That's interesting. Leaving an inheritance to the grandchildren because we normally think about leaving an inheritance to the children. Right. But when do most people pass away? When they're 80 or 90 years old, how old are their children? 50-ish. 50, 60. When do you need the money? When you're 60 or 20? 20. 20. <laughs> That's why God, in his wisdom, said, leave the inheritance to the grandchildren. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? I said many years ago, God, I want to be a good man. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we always had a mortgage on our house. We never had credit card debt. 
And uh, in 1995, maybe beginning of 96, Jan and I got a vision to eliminate all our debt. We thought it would take 10 years, but because of the supernatural, God applied a multiplication factor. We paid our last house payment in early 2001. Then what we did is we took that same money we'd been paying for our house and invested it for multiplication, and God gave me a vision. I want to deliver my children from ever having to go in debt for a house or anything else ever mm -hmm. again. We took that same money we'd been putting into our house mortgage payment, invested it, and multiplied it by the time our first son was married and uh, old enough to have a house. We had the cash to purchase the house for him and be his banker, so to speak. We, we uh, bought the house for cash and told him, you're going to pay into a fund that we've set up the same money you would have paid to a mortgage company, but zero <laughs> interest. And guess what we're going to do? That's a good deal. Guess what we're going to do with that money? We are going to use that money to purchase a house for your children, my grandchildren, <laughs> for, for cash. And we've set up a perpetual, we have set up a perpetual fund in our yeah. family that will allow our children, our, our grandchildren forever to, uh, to, you gotta have vision for yeah. this, hey? And that's what we have. We have yes. vision. And when I when I first thought of that in 1996, I said, "There's no way. We're in debt on our own house. There's no way we could even pay that off. How could we ever have the cash to, pay to, for do, the, to do that for our kids?" And God, God did the. Uh, paid off our house in five years. We had the amount of money to pay for our kids' house in about 12, 13 years, and uh, that was as a result of vision. Wow. Yeah. I well, love it. This has been so helpful. Craig, thank you much, so very, very much. People, I can't encourage you enough. When you purchase this book, we also want to get to you as quickly as possible in CD and DVD form mm -hmm. these three programs. Mm -hmm. You need to sit down, watch them again, Play encourage them in your yourself, car. begin to you know, see with the eye of faith, vision mm -hmm. of what God wants to do in you and through you. Uh, you know, for not only yourself, but for your generations. The Five Wealth Secrets available from us. We'll take a short break, and we'll be back with Craig to close today's program. Oh, it is so fun. I, I thoroughly enjoy having my friend Craig Hill with us and just helping us. Uh, you know, the, the foreword on the book is by Oz Hillman, and he's like, I wish I had this when I was 20. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way, but you know what? The, the, the Father is so faithful to me and mm -hmm. to our marriage and to mm -hmm. our generations. You know, we've started things years ago. We're doing things different. You know, mm -hmm. we've made mistakes. And, you know, and I don't want you to live another day with regret begin to do something now. Yes. I mean, vision and hope so is stirred good. up inside of you, and I can't wait to get you this book and, and, and uh, the series of these programs. Craig, today, applying it to life. Well, I think the two critical things we were talking about today, where should you invest? I would say this, invest in the vision God has given you. Invest in your own business, in your own family, in whatever God has shown you to do. Invest in missions. Invest in this uh, television ministry. Invest in things that are important to you that God has shown you. And then secondly, get a plan from God to be a good man or a good woman and leave an inheritance to your children's children. Start thinking, how can I do something that will begin to bless my grandchildren? And uh, God will do supernatural things. Like, as I was sharing, you know, it was incredible when Jan and I first got a vision to help our grandchildren. We thought it was impossible. But what was impossible, God did in, in uh, 12, 13 years. And I believe God will do the same for you. Mm -hmm. I want to pray for you today. Yes. Father, I thank you for each person watching this program today. Father, I pray that you would give a unique vision mm -hmm. just for us. Mm -hmm. Father, something right from your heart that's just for our family, what we can do practically mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray that you would eliminate the fear and the paralysis. I can't do anything. I have nothing. Father, we repent of even saying that or thinking that. And Father, I pray that you give each one of us mm -hmm. your vision. How can we put yes. a little money in our investment jar and where should we put it? I thank you that you will do that supernaturally for each one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
God has been speaking to us today. He's been speaking to you, and he, we are just going to believe God for uh -huh. that breakthrough in uh -huh. your life. We are thankful for all of you that invest in My New Day. That is the way we are able to multiply this message to the multitudes, to you. So yeah. thank you for your The vision investment. is great. I mean, to be able yes. to bring this vision into the homes of tens of wow. thousands and even around the world. It's supernatural. It's awesome. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time right here on My New Day. Bye-bye.